One of the most important events in the whole of railway history was the Rainhill Trials. These took place in 1829 and were a competition held by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway to find their first locomotive. The Liverpool and Manchester was arguably the first mainline railway in the modern sense, so this competition would shape the entire future of railways. The winner, famously, was the Rocket, built by the father and son team of George and Robert Stevenson. But there were five entrants, and today I'd like to talk about the rank outsider, the long shot, the locomotive that wasn't even powered by steam, Cycloped. When the Liverpool and Manchester Railway announced their competition, they were looking for a steam engine. The first successful steam locomotive had been built by Richard Trevithick in 1804, and since then the technology had evolved. It was clear that it was more than a novelty. Locomotives could haul many times what a horse could. George Stevenson, the engineer of the Liverpool and Manchester, and a man with a lot of experience of the technology, was convinced that steam locomotives were the future. Of course, Stevenson was in a favourable position. He was already in with the directors and his son owned a locomotive works. To get around potential bias, a competition was considered the fairest means of deciding which locomotive to pick. So the rules of the Rainhill Trials were written with steam in mind. They specified weights that accounted for fuel, water and a tender carriage, for instance. But there was no rule that said that entrants had to be powered by steam. And so, enter Thomas Brandreth. Actually, Brandreth, like Stevenson, already had an association with the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, being a former director. He had also been involved with the Stockton and Darlington Railway. While he was a barrister rather than an engineer, he was not without experience, and he was an advocate for horsepower on railways. In retrospect, this seems short-sighted. Within a few years of the trial, steam-powered main lines would be striking out across Britain and the world, but at the time, the majority of goods on the primitive railways of the day were hauled by horses. Even the Stockton and Darlington, famous for its early adoption of steam, was primarily horse-powered. Horses did have some advantages. For one thing, they were everywhere. A locomotive was an expensive bit of kit, but everyone could get hold of a horse, and people knew how to handle them. They were lightweight, early locomotives were very hard on the rails, and they didn't explode, which was more than you could say for a lot of steam engines. Actually, one of the driving forces behind the development of locomotives was the shortage of horses and fodder brought about by the Napoleonic Wars. Since Napoleon had literally met his Waterloo, this was no longer a problem. Brandreth was a fan. In fact, he'd already invented something known as a dandy cart, which was basically a railway wagon that carried horses. The idea being that your horse pulls the train uphill, then rides back down in the dandy cart. When I say he invented it, it seems that the idea was suggested by Stevenson. And when it comes down to it, put a horse in a wagon is not the most complex of devices. Regardless of all that, Brandreth set to work on his invention. Now, a cycloped doesn't seem to have been taken all that seriously, either by its contemporaries or by subsequent historians, and as a result, there's a certain amount about it that's unclear. What we know is that it weighed approximately three tons and was powered by a treadmill, with power transmitted to the four wheels via gears. Gearing, incidentally, was something that none of the other entrants had. It probably also had roller bearings, as those were something Brandreth had patented in 1825. The big mystery is how many horses there were. Was it worked by one or two? Contemporary illustrations only depict one, but they were invariably side-on and intended to provide technical information. Yet eyewitnesses from the day describe two. The starter list states that it was worked by a horse. Brandreth's patent states that it is to be worked by horses, but that's ambiguous. Does he mean more than one horse at a time, or consecutively over a long journey? Did Brandreth maybe bring more than one horse to the trial, but only use one at a time? Subsequent depictions tend to portray it with one, but those are based on the aforementioned contemporary illustrations. Most of the recent works I've read on the subject suggest that it was two, so that's what I'm going with. The treadmill was at a very slight angle, so if the horse stopped, it would be propelled backwards under its own weight. 
therefore it would have to keep walking until stopped. The contemporary author, Elijah Galloway, describes the frame surrounding the horses as being too small for them, and the whole thing as being rather crude. Brandreth was confident and expected Cycloped to reach 15 miles per hour. In the event, it managed five. According to the Liverpool Courier, and I quote, The machine was exhibited as an exercise. About 50 persons clung about the wagons, giving a gross weight with the machine of about five tonnes. They finished by noting that this could scarcely be called a fair trial of the ingenious inventor's machine, nor was it considered as such by the judges. Regardless, the minimum speed stipulated in the competition rules was 10 miles per hour. It didn't look good. On the second day of the trial, Cycloped was invited to give a second demonstration. I suspect that this was less because the judges had faith in the machine, and more because there wasn't much else to exhibit. Of the four other entrants, Saint Pere was leaking badly, Novelty's bellows had burst, and Perseverance just didn't work at all. The only steam engine actually operable was Rocket. I'm sure it didn't do much for allegations of favouritism that the only engines on show were the one built by the line's engineer, and the one built by a former director that hadn't even met the criteria. Unfortunately for Brandreth, his success would be short-lived. The Times mentioned, in passing, that one of the horses fell through the treadmill. Apparently the horse was fine, but Cycloped was not. All concerned decided to call it a day, and that was the end of the short career of Cycloped. While there were subsequent experiments in horse-powered locomotives, they simply couldn't hold a candle to steam, particularly in the wake of the advanced rocket. I always feel a little sorry for Cycloped, it never seems to have been taken seriously. It was always going to be a dead end. Rocket was the clear winner by a long chalk, and there was no way that horse-powered locomotives would have been able to cope with the long distances and high speeds demanded of the railways of even a decade later. At best, it was an also-ran. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I must apologise for my voice today. I'm recovering from a cold, so I may sound a little... hoarse. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more, if that takes your fancy. I did a separate video on another of the entrants, Saint Pere, and I'll put a link in the description to that video if you'd like to check that out. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon, and here on YouTube for your generous support. You are the oats to my horses. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.